Coming in at number 56 on our NHL draft rankings, we are going back to the U.S. National Team Development Program where we find left shot centerman Camille Bednarik, who I would call a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Yeah, Ross, I, I literally have that exact tagline in my notes for Bednarik as well. But I feel like sometimes people that gets a negative connotation. Jack of all trades, master of none. Like I could, if I could be a Jack of all trades, I, I would, I would do that. I, I think I maybe have one or two skills. That's about it. But, but Narek has four or five skills that NHL scouts are going to love here. First off, he is a left shot centerman in 61 games. He had 26 goals, 39 assists. Good for 65 points, more than a point per game guy. You'll love to see that he's committed to Boston University. Um, one thing I've been doing, it, it doesn't really matter that much, but it's interesting to see because sometimes it comes into play. I see who owns the CHL rights of these players. The Kitchener Rangers own Bednarik's rights. So we'll see. I don't think he's going to go from Boston University to the CHL, but we saw Tyler Boucher go from Boston College to the Ottawa oh, 67s. BU. BU. Oh, maybe. it was BU, right? Oh, okay. I mean, he only played there a handful of games. My bad. I forgot which Boston one it was, but it does happen. Um, and then in seven U18 games, he had six points. So Sure, this guy, we call him a jack of all trades, and, and maybe that gets that waters down his abilities, but he's able to consistently put up points, and that needs to be stated. The points are a little less caloric when they're playing on a team where I think you have to look at where he ranks on the team in scoring as well, right? Because sure. you're you're at the NTDP where goals are just being handed out like with 65 points he's fifth on the team in scoring yeah Nothing to turn your nose up at but there True. are a lot of guys who are putting up a ton of points there for our rankings he's one of those guys where if you olympic scored it where you take out the highest and the lowest the range is <laughs> tightens right up yeah. because elite prospects is lower on him a lot than anybody else 76 they have on their rankings scott wheeler the highest at 46 Chris Peters at 47, Craig Button at 52, Bob McKenzie at 54, and McKean's at 60. So a late second round pick, I think, is where we can really, I don't even want to say pinpoint because this draft is so all over the place, but I think that's kind of the talent level you're looking at. And I think if he had one more separating tool in his kit, he could be pushing that top of the second round because who doesn't want to defensively responsible player that has shown the ability to play in all situations. I think that he will be a valuable asset to an organization. And I think that for an organization to really benefit from him, you got to be very patient. I think that you're going to see him at least two, maybe three years at school. He's going into a program going under a coach, Jay Pandolfo, who made a career of doing the right things yeah. on the right side of the puck all the time. I think that in a perfect world, he's a centerman. But don't be surprised if he ends up being a winger at the NHL level. I think that it could be good for him because he's not going to blow you away with the pace of his game. So I think that it's it's for, for his best interest to get more space to put him on the wing. But let's see if he can stick at center at BU where he'll be attending in the fall. Six foot tall, 185, and also a later birthday, born in May. So he's got that extra room to grow. His average ranking comes in at 55.8. If we had the updated Craig Button rankings, he would be a little bit lower than where he comes in here at 56. Yeah, I think he might be able to stick in the middle, Ross, just because okay. he's so good defensively and he plays a physical game. Uh, a couple of reports I saw from scouts are saying that he's able to use a smart stick to steal pucks. So I feel like he could be one of those guys that you want him kind of being a rover out there and just making sure everything is nice and clean defensively. Um, I kind of project him as a solid two-way third-line center. And I, I feel like, Ross, he, he actually might be one of those guys that gets into a pro game sooner just because he plays a smart, responsible game. And like we mentioned, he doesn't have the, the shot, the speed, the, the hands. He doesn't have those skills that are hard to transfer to the NHL. He's got those skills that NHL scouts and coaches are going to love, and it's going to get him into NHL lineups sooner. Um, I, I really think teams that are contenders 
and are going to want guys playing minutes on entry level contracts are going to like him. I've got him pegged going to a team like Colorado or Boston, right? A teams that are looking for that center depth, but smart, responsible players that are going to help them win games in the playoffs. But they have that high level talent already on their team, Boston and Colorado, that they won't need to rely on Bednarik to be putting up points down there as well. Just my opinion. Yeah, of course. From the reports that I'm reading, you see Scott Wheeler say that he really kind of uh, plays to his line mate's strengths, which I think is a huge asset for a team looking. Okay, how are they going to fit in with our other skilled players if you're going to take a higher swing at a guy like Bednarik? So I think there's a lot to like about the player. I don't want it to come off as negative. Uh, there is a player we're going to cover today that I have above him. But for me, like he's, he's coming in probably mid fifties on my rankings. I'm doing it as we move up. I'm kind of adding guys in and there's yep. only a few who I have ahead of him right now during our process. So I'm excited to see who takes a jump. I agree with you that like, uh, I don't even know if they have a pick. Well, no, they just gave it away. Uh, cause I was going to say a team like Tampa could be an option for him as well, but I don't think they're going to be picking in that range, but a team that, that needs some center depth in their prospect pool will be looking at Camille Bednarik. Now with the Ottawa senators, is this a guy you'd be looking at? Uh, Ross, I gave him three stars for the Ottawa senators here. Just, I'm not sure what range he's going to end up in. I, I kind of have him going late second round. Uh, so the Sens won't be in that range. And he's not a guy I would reach on. And the Senators, they're at a point now where I feel like they can't really afford to go for those safe, high floor guys. They need to be swinging their fences a little and, and try to hit on some players that are going to have a really big boost uh, in potential. Bednarik comes in at number 56 on our Locked On Senators draft rankings. For more profiles, head over to our YouTube page, Locked On Senators.